The next deadly psychological sin is emotionalism, or what we would call living by our feelings. I do cognitive behavioral therapy, and on my list of distorted thoughts, there's one entry called emotional reasoning, and emotional reasoning goes like this. If I feel this way, it must be so. So if I feel guilty, I must be guilty. If I feel like that person doesn't like me, then they must not like me. Emotional reasoning is kind of over-interpreting our intuitions and assuming that they never misfire or give us false information. Intuition is, is a wonderful gift, but it's fallible. So it's not safe to live by our emotions or to draw conclusions based on emotion alone. At the same time, we need to value our emotions. As I see it, they're like two-year-olds. <laughs> we love our two-year-olds. We listen to our two-year-olds. We pay attention to our two-year-olds but we don't let them drive the car. They're in the back in a safety seat. And same with emotions. Listen to your emotions, value your emotions, but don't let them drive the car. You'll end up in a, in a ditch. The replacement for emotionalism is living by principle. Living by principle. Remember that motion leads to emotion. So often as we live by principle, our emotions will end up aligning with those principles. In other words, we'll end up getting an emotional reward for living by principle. Let me give you an example. The story goes like this. Newspaper columnist and minister George Crane tells of a wife who came into his office full of hatred toward her husband. I don't only want to get rid of him, I want to get even. Before I divorce him, I want to hurt him as much as he's hurt me. Dr. Crane suggested an ingenious plan. He said, go home and act as if you really love your husband. Tell him how much he means to you. Praise him for every decent trait. Go out of your way to be as kind, considerate, and generous as possible. Spare no effort to please him, to enjoy him. Make him believe you love him. After you've convinced him, of your undying love and that you cannot live without him, then drop the bomb. Tell him that you're getting a divorce. That will really hurt him. With revenge in her eyes, she smiled and exclaimed, beautiful, beautiful, he'll be so surprised. And then she followed through with her plan with enthusiasm. When she didn't return, Crane called her. He said, are you ready to go through with the divorce? Divorce, she said, never. I discovered I really do love him. Acting on principle leads us to believe what we're acting. I don't like the expression, fake it till you make it, because I don't want to be phony, but I love the expression, faith it till you make it. Act on principle by faith, and eventually your feelings will align with your actions. There's another way to combat emotionalism, and that's what we in psychology call cognitive behavioral therapy. We have noticed that life events lead to negative emotions in many people, but there's something that mediates between life events and circumstances and those emotions. And that is what we call cognitive processing. It's the way we think about those events. The good thing is that while we can't usually directly change our emotions, I don't know if you've ever tried that, but it's kind of like trying to keep a wave on the sand. You can't really change your emotions, but you can change your thoughts. And often when you change your thoughts, your emotions will follow those thoughts. And so what we do in cognitive behavioral therapy is we introduce people to various forms of distorted thinking. And we teach them how to make themselves accountable for how they're thinking about the events in their lives. Let me give you some examples of these distorted thoughts. Catastrophizing, making things much worse than they are. Mind reading, thinking you know what's in a person's mind when really you don't know. I remember preaching once at a church and someone looking at me like this and feeling really intimidated by that, just assuming that he was criticizing my sermon. And afterward, he came up and said, praise the Lord for that sermon, sister. It was really funny. It was a real lesson in the fact that I can't read people's minds. Another misbelief or another way of distorted thinking is negative filtering, focusing only on the negative. How about overgeneralizing? We see someone and perhaps he's done something foolish and we say, he's an idiot. Instead of saying the truth, which is that he can be thoughtless at times 
and he's made mistakes, but he has redeeming qualities as well. What about dichotomous thinking, black and white thinking? Either we have fun on this camp out or we don't. What about shoulds? Sometimes people view the world continually through should glasses. I just look at the people in my life in terms of what they should be instead of accepting them as they are. And, and it, it really backfires because the more you should people, the less influence you have over them, typically. What about personalizing? That's a form of distorted thinking where I take responsibility for what someone else has done. Or what about blaming when I put on them the blame that belongs to me? Another distorted thought is unfair comparisons, comparing myself with other people in such a way that I make myself feel either too good about myself or, or bad. Those are just some examples of distorted styles of thinking. What we do in cognitive behavioral therapies, we help people replace those distorted styles of thinking with healthy, balanced thinking and basically learn how to tell themselves the truth. Once they're thinking more clearly, then their emotions start to match their thought life and they start to feel better. So living by principle involves acting on principle and thinking correctly on principle. And what we find ultimately is that the emotions will follow those correct actions and thoughts. And you'll end up feeling what you're living and what you're thinking.